So I am extremely late making this video. I raced the race like three, probably, no, four weeks ago. A long time ago, way past due. I had another race in, but anyway, don't matter, let's get into it. So the race was at the European Middle Distance Champs in Coimbra, Portugal. My first time ever representing Great Britain, which was an awesome experience. We, me and my other half went out the, I think it was the Wednesday before the race. The race was on Saturday, I think. I can't actually remember. Basically got out there a few days before, went and had a wander around, had a look, checked out the course, did some a bit of a bike recce, did a run round some of the run course, just kind of got a, a general feel of the area, went out for some food. First thing to mention is that I couldn't believe how many GB athletes were out there. It was unreal. We went out for meals in the evenings and every restaurant was just filled with someone in some GB gear. So um, yeah, cool experience to be out there with a kind of like a, yeah, had like a cool feeling to it, I suppose. But yeah, it's first time ever racing for the GB, like at all, ever representing them in the age group team. So I was extremely nervous about the race the day before. We obviously got the bike checked in. We got uh, race numbers, kind of got everything ready and got the numbers on the bike and helmet and everything like that. Um, and yeah, I, the only thing that I could say about it was I was like crazy nervous. The most nervous I've ever been for a race. I don't know why. I think it was because I wasn't quite sure at like the competition and who would turn up and race it for my first time even riding a bike abroad. It was so many like first times. So I was, yeah, I was, I was very, very nervous the day before. But once we got to race morning, um, my kind of nerves settled a lot. I had, basically, I, I think I was nervous just because you, it's a lot of waiting around. So because we were there a few days before, there's a lot of sitting around. There's a lot of, I kept just wanting to go back to the race venue to check things out and check out transition. And yeah, I think there was just too much waiting around, which kind of built my nerves up. So by the time it got to the race morning, my nerves had actually settled quite a bit and I was kind of just ready to get going. Um, we'll start with the swim, obviously. So I was hoping to have like a really decent swim. I felt like, or I feel like my swimming's improved a lot. I, something I wanted to do was make sure I start like slightly further towards the front of the field just so you get a bit more clear water and you swim with the guys that are at the front. So I did that. Um, luckily, you could get in for a quick practice swim. I was a little bit late to the practice swim, so I, I did manage to get in and get like a few strokes done, but but it weren't much of a practice swim. I, the main thing was it was good to get some like water in the suit and stuff. So did that, and then I think I probably started maybe around 50th, place something like that um yeah and then I, I kind of actually felt quite good in the water i thought that i was swimming quite well i was really concentrating on trying to keep it like keep a nice steady rhythm in the swim and, and not you know flap about too much and not do weird things with your head and sight too much and i was trying to keep it quite smooth i thought i'd swam well until i got out of the water and realized my time it was 30 minutes or 30, 41, I think, for pretty much a dead on course, which maybe it was a little bit long or something, but it, I felt like I was swimming better than that, which was, it was a little bit annoying to be honest. Um, my pool times really don't seem to be matching my open water times. Like I'm in the pool, that's, what is that? Like a 140 per 100 meters or something. That's like my warm up pace and I can swim you know, quite com comfortably quicker on, than that, Lou. so it's a bit... Come on, Lou. I don't know what's going on, but it's something to look into anyway. So I had, like, I would say a very sort of average swim. After doing the course recce on the bike, I think I might have done it the day before, I knew that the course was going to be a very, very fast course. There's, when you come out of transition, you kind of come out and go right, and then as soon as you go right, there's, like, a few bumps. It's not anything, like steep or it's quite like just some short little punchy climbs that if you can keep the speed up and kind of get over them climbs you can have a really really fast day but that was for like a few miles and then and then you kind of you do like a bit of an out and back and then you come back around and then it just turns into like a really flat and fast course like really flat and fast um so i knew i was going to be like it was going to be a quick day on the bike um so on the first loop my plan was, uh, so, so yeah, I should have mentioned that. I think it was, I actually need to double check. I can't remember. 
was it three or four loops? Yeah, okay, I think, so there was four loops, I think, I hope. Uh, yeah, pretty sure there was. There was four loop, it was a four loop course, so I knew my plan was on the first loop to kind of go quite hard, figure out roughly where you are in comparison to people, um, try and maybe find the front guys, and just kind of see where you are roughly, and then you can kind of settle in for two and three, um, and then on the last one, I was going to do the first half a lap, like, fairly hard, or hardish, like, kind of, as I was going and then on the last half of that lap to kind of ease off a little bit um, because that's the f the flat and fast section and then so if you ease off a little bit hopefully the speed will stay quite fast and then um, yeah my legs will feel all right coming into transition so I did that on the first lap I went out quite hard I think I might have averaged like 270 watts I did within about half to three quarters of a lap I found some guys which were um, working together, we will say. Um, there was maybe like f five or six, maybe even more, seven or eight of them. They were all very close together and doing a lot of switching and and yeah, but they were looked like they were kind of the guys that were going to be leading the race. So I hang, I kind of sat behind them for like a little bit and quite quickly realized that this probably isn't going to be a great group to work with just because it was a it was a mess and and yeah and my power dropped off quite a bit when I hit them I was probably got went down from like I said like 260 270 to maybe around 220 230 240 mark and and the the speed didn't feel it didn't feel that fast it was um yeah so I, I basically decided that I will stick with them until the end of the first lap and then come the second lap when them rollers come again I'm going to put a bit of a dig in because I know that if you ride them right you can ride them really fast and you can if you can put in like a real proper dig up the up bits and then you can relax on the downs and just ride through that section as fast as you can um, then you can yeah you, you I might be able to kind of bridge away from them a little bit so that was exactly what I did I rode, I probably went up some of the uphills at like 350, 360 watts, like coming out of the saddle, like just getting over it, big gear, pushing on through it. And then on the des descents, just getting as aero as possible, straight back into the aero bars. Um, still pushing probably like 240, 250, but, but just trying to kind of keep that speed up as high as possible. And then you got to that, like a turnaround point after some of these bumps. And then I could see that I definitely had a gap it was probably not huge, like 15, 20 seconds, but I was away from these guys and, and yeah, they, they, it just didn't feel like they were riding very, very well. So, um, and then I could kind of just get my head down and push on and I basically just ended up um, trying to average, like I think I might have, I was trying to average around the 250, 260 marks, like a bit of a tempo effort, but just keep really aero and, and just ride the, the course as fast as possible. Um, Pretty uneventful next couple of laps. I just I kind of held that pace and I did the same sort of thing when I came back round to the them rollers again, just kind of push on a bit on the ups and then and then keep it easy on the downs. Ended up making that gap a lot bigger. And by this point, I was riding so fast that I was I was starting to think that I was probably at the front of the race. The reason being just because I mean I was yeah, I was riding really well and I didn't start that far back on the swim that I thought there'd be someone ahead of me. So I actually thought coming into the last lap that I was in first, um, which was a weird feeling. It was like, I kind of didn't know what to do. I didn't know whether I should push on and make the gap bigger or I should ease off a bit and hope that, because it was really, really hot there, whether I should ease off and try and make sure that I run well. So I chose that option. I was like, oh, well, I don't want to overheat because the race starts a lot later in the day as well. So we were running at like the hottest point in the day. So I ended up easing off on the last lap thinking I was in first position to hopefully then be able to hold the lead through the run. What ended up happening was I did exactly that basically. I ended up, I'll tell you the splits of the bike. So I ended up uh, averaging, I think I normalized 260 and averaged 250 or it was something around that. My time for the bike was a 2.06, which uh, was, uh, yeah, 
which was averaging basically 26 miles an hour, which I was very, very happy with. That was much faster than I was expecting, especially with having eased off, like I said, on that last lap. Got into, finished the bike, was happy with that, and I was like, awesome. Legs still felt pretty good. Got off the bike, and someone shouted at me, you're in first. So that kind of, yeah, I think he said you're first off the bike, or you're in first, or... So then I was like, okay, I am definitely leading this race. Got into transition. I did notice that there's a couple of other bikes still in transition, so I was like, oh, maybe I'm not. And I kind of got a bit confused as to what was going, what, what was going on, basically. Then... Racked the bike, had a pretty decent transition. It wasn't like horrendous, um, wasn't overly fast, but was just okay. Got out onto the run course and another guy shouted at me. Someone shouted at me, you're, first, you're the first Brit, which then I was like, oh, so maybe there is some other people in front of me because I've seen bikes. But then the guys, and I'm kind of getting mixed messages. And then some guy, probably about a mile into the run, said the gap to the guy in front is like two minutes. And I was like, what? There's a, so basically, it then kind of got really confused. And I was like, so there's definitely a guy ahead of me. He, because he's like, or it was a minute and a half, two minutes or something like that. Um, and then there's a gap, definitely there's a gap of, of roughly similar to the guy behind me. So then I was, I was like, re I didn't know where I was basically. Um, but I settled into, my plan was to kind of sit at around 6.30s because that's, what I did in Nottingham, I averaged that, and I knew that I knew that I could run faster than that in a half. I know that I can do that, but on a day like that where it was really hot, I was thinking six thirties will be plenty. If you feel like you can pick it up towards the end, then do that, but don't don't let it all out in the first like five miles. Six thirties felt really comfy at every aid station. There was probably an aid station every like mile and a half, two miles. I'd pick up a bottle of water, half of it over my head, and then sip it and then throw it. Um, just really, really wanted to keep as cool as possible. And then at about maybe four or five miles, some guy overtook me, a French guy, and he, he, we had a bit of like a laugh. He was like, we're double checking what age category each other's in because everyone goes to the races just to kind of place in the age category. He was in like the 45 to 49, I think. He ended up going in front and um, overtook me. I kind of stayed maybe like 100 metres behind him for another three or four miles. Again, nothing too eventful. And then at around, I was feeling pretty good. I still was didn't want to push on because I didn't want to blow up and lose where I was because I at that point, I thought I was in third place overall um, and would have been, I don't know what, because the, the guy that was right in front, I didn't know what age category he was in. So I was thinking, oh, well, I can maybe be second in my age cat and third overall. And then at about 11 or 12 miles, another French guy overtook me. He was in my age category because you have to put your, your label thing, your age cat on your, on your leg. He was, then I was thinking, oh, maybe I'm third in my age category and fourth overall. He came flying past me. I couldn't really keep with him. He ended up having a really good run split. Uh, and then, yeah, kind of just held the 630s for, for the whole race, ended up uh, my time was a 124, which wasn't too bad. I was kind of happy with that in that heat. Held pretty even splits the whole way. Crossed the line and I got told when I crossed the line that I was the first Brit to cross the line, which meant I was the fastest Brit, which was cool. I also was told, I, was, I think I was told one of the French guys, I think they basically, the French guys thought that they had beat me overall so I think they thought they were second and third there was a guy that came first he was quite a bit ahead at that point um, and he was a Spanish guy and then yeah and then the, one of the French guys said to me that I, I think I had the second or third fastest bike or something like that and then yeah someone else told me some guy that was I think from that runs uh, an age group page I'll put the page up here on Instagram he interviewed me and we chatted and I think, yeah, he said that I was the first Brit and I think he said I was, I think he might have said that I was eighth overall or something and I was very confused. So I was like, I have no idea where I've come. I don't know what the results are. All I knew at that point, I checked my watch and I did a 4.06 oh uh, total time for the middle distance, which is a huge PB and I'm not sure I'll be beating that anytime soon. But yeah, it's really happy with that. And then I went and met my other half we checked out the results and it turns out that 
I came second overall. I had the fastest bike split by five minutes. And I was and the guy that beat me, so the Spanish guy, he he had I think the second fastest bike split. So he would have definitely been way ahead of me, but he also out he outswam me by five minutes and I outbiked him by five minutes. So we never ended up crossing paths basically. Um, which is a bit of a shame because if I had known that he was in front, I definitely would have pushed on more on the bike because there was the, the watts felt easy. Holding 250, 260 felt really, really comfy and I know I could have pushed more. So yeah, a little bit annoyed by that. I could have made up maybe a little bit more time or at least try and caught him and it might have pushed me on a bit. But ended up, he beat me by, I think it was around three minutes. He did a 403, I did a 406. So yeah, very well deserved win from him. Um, yes, yeah, so then I came second in my age cat, second overall, was the fastest Brit. And um, yeah, really, really happy with that result. It was not what I was expecting. I, yeah, it was a weird experience being that far ahead in a race, especially a European Championships race. Yeah, overall, really, really happy. Uh, went in at eight o'clock that evening. I don't know why it was so late, but it was eight o'clock that evening. Went and stood on the podium, collected my medal. If I'm honest, I was I was a little bit disappointed that you don't get like an overall medal. I, I get why, because it's an age group event. It's not about overall, but it was like, I got a, a, a silver medal for coming second in my age cap, but I was also second overall in the whole entire race, which was almost felt more uh, award worthy than the second in my age cap, but that doesn't matter. Um, had a really, really cool experience. And yeah, I think that qualifies me to race next year for the European champs, I believe, and possibly even might be able to use it for the Worlds. I don't know. But um, I'm kind of tempted to do it again next year and see if I can push it on a little bit more, maybe. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to say on the race. One thing I am going to mention is that if you watch my last video, you will know that I was really unmotivated. Um, having a lot of issues training wise and on the bike and I'm still having them issues. I'm still struggling a little bit with motivation. Um, I don't want to put a downer on this video because it was a, a really good video. Um, but yeah, it. I was left feeling proud of my achievements, but also still a little bit uh, lost with where to go um, next. But anyway, I don't want to go too much into it. I don't want to make it negative. So yeah, overall 406, second place. Um, yeah, super happy. My next video will be Holcomb's race report. I've already raced Holcomb. That's how late this video is. It was only two weeks later, but yeah, so that's going to be my next video. So make sure you're subscribed if you want to see how I did in Holcomb. That race was arguably more interesting than this race. Definitely got more to speak about on the Holcomb race. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that. And I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time for some more triathlon related content. Peace.